what a joy and a pleasure to be here to worship with you today, to see all, we probably shouldn't say all friends, to see our friends, because <clears throat> most of us are getting old. But it's good to be able to get old. And God is good. God is good. I was so thrilled to hear news on Aaron this week. God loves us unconditionally. And he will take us through wherever we need to go. And he will see us through. And sometimes we don't understand that. But if we trust him and believe in him, all things are going to work for the good of those who trust. He did a good job on reading the scripture reading. And I want to thank him for that, for his willingness to do that. It seems that probably we started off with a negative scripture reading. But let me say this. Anyone, anyone that is surrendered to God and believe what he says, there is nothing negative in God's word. But there are warnings and there are promises. And if we don't accept the promises, we better heed the warnings and then accept the promises. Let's pray. Father, as we open your word, your word, God, may it touch each one of us. May each one of us be willing to listen and to be filled with your truth, your love. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus said, Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. It seems strange to hear that. To hear our all-knowing Lord says there's something or someone he doesn't know. Jesus here refers not to an intellectual knowledge but to a relational knowledge with him. Now, to understand a verse, we should always start with the context. Jesus is wrapping up his Sermon on the Mount with a final warning about true faith. And Jesus predicts that false Christian prophets will be coming. And he said, they will be like wolves in sheep's clothing. They may use all the right God talk and even make impressive displays of power, but they will not belong to the Lord. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name 
and in your name drive out demons, and in your name perform many miracles, and then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evil doers. Let me ask you a personal question. How many of us here have eternal life? How many of us here believe that if the Lord were to come right now, I am going back home with him? That's where we have to get. You know, I can stand up here and I can and I'm going to tell you the truth today that I am a sinner. And I ask God every morning and every evening if my relationship is right with him. If what I'm doing is his will or my will because that's what was going on there, you see. They knew God, or they knew of him. They did not have a relationship with him, but yet they claimed that they were gods, and they were doing it in God's name. You see, in Jesus' words on Judgment Day, we see several important truths it's not a verbal claim that one follows Jesus that saves us. Nominal Christianity cannot save. Also, it's not a demonstration of spiritual insight or power that saves. A person can seem like a Christian in the eyes of other people, yet still be an evil doer. I will tell you something. If I am tearing down my brothers and sisters, guess what I am? I'm an evil doer. An evil doer in God's sight, and I will be sent away from his presence. Only those who do the will of the Father and who are known of God will enter heaven. We can say what we like, but who are we? So what is the Father's will? The Bible shows us some stories. There's one there. Some men came to Jesus with a question about what God required of them. They asked him, what must we do to do the work that God requires? And Jesus answered, the work of God is this. Go out. Do ingathering. Go out. Do evangelistic series. Go out. And do school like you're doing here. Go out and do all of those things. That's what he answered. Not. That's not what he answered. You see? Here's what he answered. The work of God is this. Is to believe in the one that he has sent. 
John 6, 28 and 29. God wants us to have faith in his son. This is his command to believe in the name of the son, Jesus Christ. And those who are born again by faith in Christ, listen, will produce good works to the glory of God. I believe that the work that you're doing here with this school is to the glory of God. I believe that with all of my heart. And I believe that's why you're doing it. But don't let's get wrapped up in the works. If we're going to get wrapped up in anything, get wrapped up in Jesus. And when Jesus said, I never knew you and I just hope and pray that it won't be either one of us. But there is the possibility. Because a lot of us want to work our way to heaven. We think that we should be doing something in order to get there. That is not true. We will be doing something because we are going there with him and what he has done. When he said, I never knew you, to the feigned disciples. He meant that he never recognized them as his true disciples or friends. He never had anything in common with them nor approved of them. They, they were no relations of him as we read in Mark chapter 3 verses 34 and 35. Christ did not dwell in their hearts, as we are told in Ephesians chapter 3, 7. See, Christ will dwell in our hearts, and everything that we will do will be the result of our relationship with him, not because we have to do, but because we want and love to do. In all these ways and more, Jesus never knew them. If you know, if you read it, and you see it, and you study it, and you pray about it, you'll see that Jesus is not breaking off the relationship here. There was never a relationship to break off. Despite their high sounding words and showy displays of religious fervor, they had no intimacy with Christ doesn't matter what title I have and I do have one Stephen has one Pastor Ken has one but I'm going to tell you something we're, no, we're not going there because of our title we're going there because of him and what he has done and what he is continuing to do in our lives if we allow him. That's the only way that you and I are going to heaven. That's the only way that you and I are getting out of this world alive. Is based on our relationship with Jesus Christ. So it turns out that what matters so much that we know God on some level but that God knows us. As Paul explained whoever loves God is known by God. The Lord tends his flock like a shepherd and he knows who are his sheep and I ask myself the question every day do he know me and those somber words I never knew you depart from me ye that work iniquity 
shows that Jesus is indeed omniscient. He did not know them in the sense he would if they were his followers, but he knew their hearts. They were full of iniquity, and Isaiah's condemnation of hypocrisy fits this group well. These people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. The evildoers whom Jesus does not know are fake Christians. Fake Christians. And if we do not believe that there are fake Christians, why did he give the parable of the wheats and the tares in the church? Sad. It's sad because it doesn't have to be that way. If we allow the Lord to be the Lord and Savior of our lives, instead of us trying to be the Lord and Savior of our lives. Because that's the problem. I want to be me. I want to do things my way. Good Sabbath school study this morning. And that's what it was all about. I want to be in control. Not God. And those who are bid to depart from the presence of God will not partake of the blessings of the kingdom. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But I, 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 have, I have to say this. I have gone to and I have attended and I have done too many funerals in the past 25 to 30 years. And I have said in in congregations and with families that I knew that the individual that had died, unless it was at the last moment, was not right with God. And yet, I have never seen anybody that was going in the other direction. Have not seen it. Doesn't matter what your life was like. Doesn't matter if you trusted only in yourself. God loves you. And he does. He does. I remember when Pastor John Brushett passed away. And uh, I took part in, in the service and I did the message, and I made the statement that John Russett was a lover of God, and God knew him, but he was a sinner, as we all are. And I made the same statement back then, as I just made today, that not everybody is going to go to heaven and have eternal life. That, that's not reality. We all can, but it's not going to happen if we don't have a relationship with God, if we don't allow him to be Lord and Savior of our lives. It's not happening. And you wonder where or how the word is getting out. It was about four months later I was at Walmart in Clarenville, wanting to get out, by the way, but my wife was with me, and I wasn't allowed to leave. And I, I was walking through, the, through one of the corridors, and this, this gentleman, hair, same color as mine, black, no, gray, and, and he stopped me, and he says, Brother, I just want to tell you, you are the only preacher that I've heard in years that told the truth. And I'm thinking, 
Oh my. What's he talking about? And I, I said to him, I said, what do you mean? He said, I viewed the service online that you did for Pastor John Brushett. You made the statement that not everyone is going to have eternal life when they die. He said, nobody says that. And I says to him, I says, where did you hear it? Because I wasn't even aware that it was being online. He said, I was in Florida. And I said, you're... I said, okay, let's leave it. And I realized then I was gone farther than I'll ever go in my own life, that those the kinds of things sort of take me sometimes where I don't want to go. But the Lord, he's an awesome God. He's a loving God. And he wants every one of us to have eternal life because that's why he sent his son. That's why he allowed his son Jesus to die upon the cross. That's why Jesus accepted, accepted that, I'm going to call it a task, but that sacrifice to be on the cross for you and for me so that his righteousness can cover me. Not mine because I have none. But he says, he wants to have a relationship with you. But he warns fake Christians. He says, they will be cast into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth in Matthew 8, 12. And those fake Christians who Jesus says he never knew will not produce the fruits of Galatians. Rather, they will produce the opposite, the works of the flesh, trying and believing that what they do will give them eternal life. Jesus warns. He warns that one day, doesn't matter if you or I believe it, has no bearing on it because he said it and it will happen. He said it and it is true. He warns us that he will tell a group of religious practitioners, I never knew you. God takes no delight in sending people to hell. But those who are told to depart have rejected God's eternal purpose and plan for their lives. They have spurned the light of the gospel, as we are told in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2. Choosing darkness instead of the light. Because their deeds were evil. They were selfish deeds. And at the judgment, they try to justify themselves as worthy of heaven on the basis of their works. But no one, no one, do you think, do you think if, 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 if I'm not invited into the kingdom and, and I, I say to God, but God, don't you remember on April the 30th, when I did not want to go to Bay Roberts and preach, I went there because why? Do you think that's getting me in? No, if it do, I don't know. See, we can't and we shouldn't, but we do try to justify our own works. And we're claiming to do all of these good works in Christ's name. Those people fail to do the only work that counts. To have faith in the one that he sent. And so Jesus the righteous judge 
condemns them to eternal separation from him. See, it doesn't matter. We can say all we like. Oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what we do. It doesn't matter. It does matter. Because a lot of the things that we do are sin. And the Bible tells us one thing about sin. It tells us that there's a penalty for it. And that is death. The soul who sins is the one who will die. The good news is that a loving God has pursued us. If, if you don't understand anything else, just take that word. The good news is that God has pursued us. He has pursued me. He has pursued you. Not the other way around. God has pursued us in order to bring us salvation. And Jesus declared his purpose to seek and save what was lost. And he pronounced his purpose accomplished when he died on the cross with the words, it is finished. And having a right relationship with God depends, it, 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 with God begins with acknowledging our sin. And next comes a confession, a humble confession of our sin to God. It says, for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. Romans 10, 10. And this repentance must be accompanied by faith, by trust. Specifically, faith that Jesus' sacrificial death and miraculous resurrection qualify him to be my Savior, to be your Savior. And if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You see, we look at this and we read this and then we look at this text here and say, well, how can God say he don't know me when he says that he's done all of this? We confuse it. We confuse it. He seeks us. And he says, I died for you. If you trust that and accept that, I will give you the Holy Spirit to take you and bring you back. And you can walk with me so we can have the relationship that I desire and you would want with me. That's it. That's it. And as we are allowing him, the Spirit of God, to come in and immerse us every day to lead us and to guide us into all truth. Guess what we won't be? We won't be selfish, we won't be deceived, and we will not deceive. We cannot be deceived if every hour of the day we're asking that the spirit of truth lead us, guide us, and direct. So do you want to know how to get right with God? Allow him in totally and completely. Don't force him out. I have a tendency to do that, you know. You know when it is? When I look at good old days instead of my dear Savior. Lord, yeah, I know what you want me to do today, but here's what I want to do. And that day normally ends up being a disaster. But yet he's still with me. He's still there waiting for me to say, Lord, I'm sorry. Come in. I want to come home. I want to come back with you. That's how we get right with God. And if we get right with God, if we allow him to be right with us, guess what? 
we're going home to him. We don't have to say any more about that. But, but, now, now, today, as in Acts 4.12, in those days, that is not a political correct thing to say. It's not popular. It, 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 it's not a popular thing to say today is that not everyone is going to heaven. It's the reverse. The most popular thing today is everyone is going to heaven. All paths lead to heaven. There are many who think they can have heaven without having Jesus, and you cannot. You cannot. They want the glory, but they don't want to be bothered by the cross much less the one who died there. Many, many don't want to accept Jesus as the only way of going to heaven and are determined to find another path. But Jesus warns us. He warns us that no other path exists and that the consequences for rejecting this truth is an eternity in hell, which is forever without him. He told us that whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on him. Faith in Christ is the only key to go to heaven. There is only one key to have eternal life. And that's true. The blood and the merits of Jesus Christ. You and I can do all that we want to do. We can get up and we can plan our day without him. And we can do good. Which what appears good to society. But I can tell you this right now. From what I understand of the word. That all of our goodness is like filthy rags. You want to have white, righteous rags? Let Jesus clothe you. That's how we're going to get to heaven. That's the only way that we are going to get to heaven. So who will actually enter God's kingdom? How can I guarantee that I'm going to heaven? The Bible makes a clear distinction between those who have eternal life and those who do not. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son does not have life. It all goes back to faith. Those who believe in Christ are made the children of God. Those who accept Jesus' sacrifice as the payment for their sins and who believe in his resurrection are going to heaven. They already have eternal life. Those who reject Christ are not. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. As awesome as heaven would be for those who accept Christ as their Savior, hell will be that much more awful for those who reject him. One cannot read the Bible seriously without seeing it over and over again. The line is drawn. The line is drawn. The Bible says there is only one way to heaven. Jesus Christ. That's the only way. And we need, we should, but we would have to pray for it because it don't come naturally. 
In order to follow Jesus' command, we need to enter through the gates. Enter through the narrow gate, he says. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Faith in Jesus. Faith in Jesus is the one means of going to heaven. Those who have faith are guaranteed to get there. The question is for you and I today is do we truly trust in what Jesus has done and what he is doing? And if we do, I do believe that we're looking forward to going to heaven to spend eternity with him. And what a time that is, what a joy it's going to be. Just, just think about it. And as we're going to be singing the closing song, which I believe I have here, because I believe this with all of my heart. I believe, as the song says, 626, in a little while, we're going home. It's up to you and I, based on what Jesus has done and what he's doing, which home we're going to. Is it going to be eternal life or is it going to be eternal death? The only way we have eternal death is accept Jesus Christ as our Savior and Lord. The only way to have eternal or, or eternal life, the only way to have eternal death is to go in the opposite direction and accept what I have done and am doing. Because the only answer is in life. And life is in Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for Jesus. For the gift of eternal life. And Lord, that you're soon coming. That we will realize that. And in a little while, we are coming home with you. So Father, be with us, protect us, and guide us. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. And Lord, if we have love for you, we automatically have love for one another. So let this church be the light to the families and communities around us. May they see you through us. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.